um, we're now going to speak to Dr. Melora on his recent publication on the morphology of primate mandibles. So, um, could you just give us a brief summary of your publication, please? Uh, yeah, uh, essentially, uh, we wanted to explore how the, the mandible in, in a famous group of mammals like the primates evolved through space and time. So, our approach was essentially try to quantify uh, the size and the shape of the mandibles using a, a different kind of new methodological approach and try to understand the, how tight could be the correlation between the mandible and the feeding adaptation in a diverse range of species. Uh, that's because the mandible as being as an anatomical structure always uh, very important to understand uh, the feeding adaptation of extant and also fossil animals. Uh, in fact, if you just think about the word mandible, that comes from the Latin mander, which means to chew. So it's definitely the most important anatomical innovation in mammals. But uh, um, there seems to be, the more that I said we are looking at, there seems to be not a very, very close association between the mandible and the diet in different groups of mammals. So I started looking, for instance, at other groups such as carnivores and nucleates, and in this particular publication, uh, what we found is uh, uh, an association with the diet between mandible shape and, and feeding adaptation in a broad range of primate species. Although, if you analyze uh, a subset of data, uh, you just realize that this association is highly significant in some particular groups. And those particular groups include the strepsirides, uh, which are uh, the lemuriform primates. So let's say all the lemurs from Madagascar and other species such as the Galagos and Potus that are in uh, East Africa and Asia. Uh, uh, another strong link between the mandible shape and the uh, diet occurred also in the New World primates, such as the, uh, a group called platyrites. And, um, and this group essentially appears to have had a very quick radiation. So this means that as they colonize South America, they managed to colonize different feeding niches and diversify in the morphology. Uh, what about the groups to which we belong? Uh, that was uh, essentially a bit disappointing to, to find out that the link between mandibular shape and, um, and feeding adaptation in the group of old world monkeys, which includes us and big apes, but also um, baboons and uh, all old world monkeys, including African species and, uh, and Asian species, uh, like Mandibaka, for instance. Uh, we couldn't find uh, a strong link. Uh, this doesn't mean, obviously, that the mandible is not suitable in this group of species chewing food, but essentially it means that the species are kind of pre-adapted to certain feeding adaptation, depending on their uh, group and their phylogenetic history. Uh, so, for instance, if you look at the folivores within the old world species, you realize that they have some particular strategies, such as gut fermentation in groups such as the colobites. And these allow, or essentially diet, not to be as diversified as you might expect in the group. Uh, so this was a kind of a, a very interesting, uh, also because we realized that, for instance, the, the mandible shape of humans as a species uh, is not that distinct from that of the other hominids. Uh, so it looks actually quite uh, uh, similar to that of a chimpanzee, which makes sense, obviously. And um, this also suggests that most of our own evolution has been influenced by what happened in the cranium rather than in the mandible. Uh, in fact, if you perform a similar analysis on the cranium, for instance, you will see that the human beings definitely are kind of outliers uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this kind of analysis, while in, in the mandible it is not so. So we, we apparently are not that unique, at least in the anatomy of our knowledge. So was that why the primates were chosen for this study um, or could be used on other animals as well? Yeah, no, I, th I think we just uh, uh, were, wanted to explore the main question, which is, uh, is the mandible uh, well adapted in, in mammals uh, on feeding adaptation? So primates was just a group we jumped into because, uh, uh, curiously, we had a colleague in Brazil and he collected a, a lot of photographs from Brazilian Museum and Institution. 
And so we just decided to, to explore the data set. It was, it was a, a very big data set with about 600 multiples already photographed. Um, obviously, now we have, uh, we have more advanced techniques, such as uh, three-dimensional uh, laser scanning. And that can allow, obviously, to look at multiples and in the sky in a better way. Although the strength of the study was that, uh, apart from, from the high number of specimens we were uh, included, uh, was also the fact that the multiples generally tend to vary pretty much quite a lot in the lateral view. So um, we have now evidence that essentially if you look at the same data set but in three dimensions, you're probably going to get similar kind of results. So what's next with this research? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the general idea uh, will be uh, to explore all mammals all together. Uh, but this obviously will take time because uh, uh, so far we try to manage uh, big data set of carnivores and ungulates. And primates is the next one. And within primates, actually, there's still a lot to do because what we, we would like to add is also a perspective based on fossils. And in fact, all of our conclusions were actually based on what we observe nowadays on extant species variation. But if you include fossils, you might get a different answer. Uh, another problem is also on how we quantify diet in, in animals. I mean, we have now an excellent uh, toolkit just to quantify anatomy, uh, animal performance, but there is still not a standard way to, to quantify diet, for instance. And it would, this would be an important step if we want still to understand more about the, the morphological uh, diversity that we can observe nowadays and in the past. Uh, and that's because uh, we just realized, especially in the study of the monkeys, that the way we categorize diet is very simplistic. Uh, obviously, you can have a frugivore species that prevalently eats fruit, but then can incorporate, for instance, uh, sometimes meat in its diet, sometimes uh, hard fruit rather than soft fruit. And this is important because uh, it's not uh, well uh, quantified yet. Uh, and so when we go back in the past and try to use this method to interpret fossil species, then it all becomes very, very complicated because of this uh, dietary oversimplification. So that's something as we also would like to explore, just to get a better insight about what animals really do, um, rather than try to restrict them in, a, in a boxes, that's it. Thank you very much, it was very interesting. And we're going to put a link to the paper below this, and we're also going to ask Carlo if he could do a little video on photogrammetry. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.